This is Mac OS Ken. A sign of the times from Mr. Softy. A sign of new Macs in the near future. And the Dutch dating app store origin story. It is Tuesday, the 15th of February, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home. If you're like me, you spend a lot of time inside. Sort of makes it hard to see what's happening outside. Technology to the rescue in the form of the new wireless outdoor camera from Simply Safe. It lets you see what's happening outside, from inside, right on your phone. Of course, Simply Safe can keep an eye on stuff inside as well, through indoor cameras, motion sensors, and hazard sensors like smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. And all of it monitored 24 7 by professionals ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs to your home. And installing all of it, the wireless outdoor camera, and the interior equipment is super simple. I had my sensors, base station, and keypad installed in well under an hour. Check it out for yourself. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com. Dot com slash macOS can. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. S I M P L I. Go to simplysafe.com slash macOS can. Strange to start off with a Microsoft story that is not directly tied to Apple, but could be a sign of things to come. Engadget says Mr. Softy is planning to reopen a number of its corporate offices by the end of this month. That would put the back-to-work crew back to work nearly two years after COVID-19 forced a run of -of out-of-office memos. The plan, according to Engadget, is for Microsoft to enter the final stage of its Washington State Return to Work plan starting the 28th of February, at which point facilities, including the company's Redmond headquarters and services, will be completely open to workers and visitors alike. The piece says that starts a 30-day clock for staff and managers who manage them to hammer out whatever work routine they've worked out be it work from home, work from work, or a combination of the two. The same goes for Microsoft's presence in the San Francisco Bay Area, according to the report. Those offices will also begin the reopening process on the 28th of February. Reopening around the rest of the country will happen as conditions allow, according to the software giant. I say it could be a sign of things to come, And Gadget points out that Microsoft's schedule is more aggressive than other titans of tech. Facebook isn't planning for back to work at work until the 28th of March. Apple and others have indefinite delays, according to the report. Another hint of new Macs coming soon. Though nothing has been announced, we've heard rumors for the last week or so of an Apple product event in the first part of March. Speculation has the company announcing a 5G-enabled iPhone SE, a new iPad Air, and maybe a new Mac or new Macs of some sort. Now there is support for that last one. Back in mid-January, the company filed what appeared to be new iPads and new iPhones with the Eurasian Economic Commission, or EEC. Now a piece from the Mac Observer says they appear to have done the same again with Macs. It's hard to know for certain what Apple has in store. While the company is required to register devices that employ encryption with the EEC ahead of their release, they can keep some information hidden. The reason we think there are iPhones and iPads on the way is because Apple has registered a number of devices that run iOS 15 and iPadOS 15. 
The Mac Observer indicates that Apple has since registered three Macs with the EEC, though the site's not sure we'll see all three at the anticipated March event. One of the models registered is a laptop, and TMO has no problem believing we will see that. As for the other machines, while it's possible that they will be out as well, the Mac Observer thinks they could be held until this summer's WWDC or later. Since Apple sometimes registers model numbers with the commission up to a year ahead of release, the site says it's possible that one of these new computers might not appear until the fall. While rumors of new Macs abound, Apple started the week with updates for older machines. Mac Rumors says the company released macOS Big Sur 11.6.4 on Monday, as well as security update 2022-002 Catalina. While both are said by the company to be security updates, the Apple Security Updates page lists no vulnerabilities addressed, which is kind of random. Apple released an update for its support app on Monday with a pretty useful feature. Mac Rumor says the company will ballpark the cost of run of the mill repairs in the application. Made for iPhone and iPad, version 4.5 of the app includes a My Devices section. If something's wrong with one of those, you can tap on it and access a few options. According to the report, tapping on common repairs like a cracked screen, a cracked back, or battery service will provide an estimate of what the repair might cost alongside options to book a repair. There are no cost estimates for more complicated repairs like liquid damage or camera not working as expected, according to the report. Apple's release notes say the application is now available and translated for users in Ukraine. It also includes unspecified performance enhancements and bug fixes. The Apple support app is free. The updated version is available now in the App Store. Foxconn is putting some of its money where its things are getting better in the supply chain mouth is. Apple's manufacturing partner issued a press release Monday announcing a joint venture to make semiconductors in India. The Taiwanese manufacturer is teaming with the India-based multinational Vedanta to make chips on the subcontinent. The joint venture seems less about getting the world out of the current semiconductor shortage than it is about long-term plans for India. Money lines from the press release include, The first-of-its-kind joint venture between the two companies will support Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision to create an ecosystem for semiconductor manufacturing in India, and the targeted project will provide a significant boost to domestic manufacturing of electronics in India. That said, you got to figure that semiconductor manufacturing anywhere is good for semiconductor supply everywhere. Eventually. No word in the release on when the joint venture will actually start cranking out chips. More news in a moment, but first a word from BetterHelp Online Therapy, sponsor of today's show. Whether it's going to the gym, making time for a haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. You can do that with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. My last therapist and I would talk on the phone sometimes, but he was also great about checking in by text, just to see how things were going. Made it feel less formal somehow. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. As I said before, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and macOS Ken listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash macOS Ken. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P 
betterhelp.com slash macOS Ken. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOS Ken. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. News from the Netherlands that will shock no one. Apple Insider had the country's Authority for Consumers and Markets, or ACM, saying Monday that Apple's plans for third-party payment acceptance in the Dutch App Store are unreasonable. In a statement released Monday, Apple Insider says the ACM complains about Apple's requirement for developers to create a specific version of their app to be submitted to the App Store, if it is a dating app serving the Netherlands and is either linking users away from the app to facilitate an in-app payment or is using a third-party payment processor within the app itself. Well, when you put it that way... Apple Insider continues, the ACM says the revised conditions that Apple has imposed on dating app providers are unreasonable and create an unnecessary barrier since the policy demands a completely separate app to be created, rather than modifying an existing app to add the alternate payments, ACM finds it an unreasonable condition that is at odds with the requirements that Apple had set out. Having reached no acceptable conclusion, and it being Monday, that was another 5 million euros, or $5.65 million on Apple's invoice from the Dutch, The Netherlands has said it'll fine Apple that amount every week that Apple is out of compliance until it hits the maximum allowed under the law there, 50 million euros. Yesterday's added five brings the amount fined so far to 20 million euros. We kind of missed the beginning of the whole Dutch dating app app store thing around these parts. I'm pretty sure that's because it started on Christmas Eve. Philip Hummer DeWitt's Apple 3.0 ran a couple of pieces over the weekend about how the whole thing began. Bottom line, it began with Match Group. Match Group owns Tinder, Match.com, OkCupid, Plenty of Fish, and plenty of other dating apps. Match Group, by the way, also a member of the Coalition for App Fairness, which this time last year was lobbying a number of U.S. states, including North Dakota, Arizona, and Minnesota, to enact legislation to force Apple to allow third-party payment methods in the App Store. The supposition of one Apple 3.0 reader is that the dust-up in the Netherlands is about finding a convenient venue to establish a regulatory precedent somewhere in the world. Above Avalon's Neil Seibert picked up on all of this a little bit earlier. Writing of the moves from Dutch authorities, he said, This order is not the byproduct of a multi-year study into the App Store's impact on the Netherlands' economy. It's not a result of Dutch consumers demanding change. It's not even driven by a grassroots campaign consisting of small businesses and indie developers. Instead, it's the result of a $30 billion company wanting to reduce the need to go through Apple to reach users on the iOS platform. For our discussion, instead of saying the order applies to developers with dating apps in the Netherlands, we'll just say Match Group in the Netherlands, as that description more accurately reflects the situation. While the fight between Apple and Dutch regulators may have been astroturfed by the world's largest dating conglomerate, the scent of blood does attract other predators. The Mac Observer has word of a new movement against Apple in the Netherlands. According to that, the Dutch App Store's Claim Foundation has taken on both Apple and Google over claims that Dutch consumers have paid up to 1 billion euros too much for apps. The foundation alleges both Apple and Google abuse their market power in the conditions placed on apps and in-app purchases. The piece goes on to say the foundation, chaired by tech entrepreneur and journalist Alexander Klopping, believes both tech giants should refund the excess payments. Its argument stresses that Apple and Google couldn't charge such high commissions if there was more competition in the app marketplaces. In his call to action, Klopping says, 
Dutch users have suffered damage that can amount to up to a billion euros. We are now going to reclaim the overpaid money through collective actions. Together, we will ensure that Apple and Google play the game fairly from now on. Do you agree? And do you want the overpaid money back? Sign up now. They say they don't want to sue and are inviting Apple and Google to, I don't know, discuss terms of their surrender, I suppose. Barring that, I guess Apple and Google could see the Dutch App Store's Claim Foundation in court at some point. It looks like Apple's prepping for a new store in the UK, its first in nearly a decade. 9 to 5 Mac highlights a report from Michael Stieber's Tabletop's newsletter. The site has the newsletter indicating that Apple has begun hiring for a brand new store in Greater London, which will be the first new store location in the UK since Apple Edinburgh opened in 2014. Oh man, we should go there. 2014? That sounds great. Steeper bases his expectation on some Apple job postings. No word on where in London the new store will be, and no indication as to when it might open. And finally today, whether it truly is an honor just to be nominated certainly seems to boost viewers. 9to5Mac has the latest streaming charts from Just Watch. Last week, both the Apple TV Plus film Coda and the Apple TV Plus film The Tragedy of Macbeth made their way back into the streaming top 10. Not coincidentally, last week was also the week that both were nominated for a few Academy Awards, including Macbeth's Denzel Washington for Best Actor and Coda for Best Picture. The 2022 Academy Awards will be handed out on Sunday, the 27th of March. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash macOS Ken. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.